Wanted in s- Before our next drama, permit me to step out of character as your unseen host for a moment of personal privilege. Call it the primacy of interest of the creator, if you wish. My name is Harlan Ellison, and I am the author of the story you're about to experience. The story is titled Wanted in Surgery, and I wrote it many years ago. It was, in fact, the 100th story that I sold way back in 1957. I received $260 for this novelette, a penny a word, from a magazine no longer with us, the science fiction digest called If. Now, at first exposure, this seems to be a story about the horrors of technology, in specific the horrors that are visited on the last of the human surgeons, one Stuart Bergman, M.D. But before you relegate this tale to the unconsidered category of Luddite fables intended to slow progress and wistfully ache for the days of simpler life before we came fully to accept the machine god's embrace, take that momentary cortical thalamic pause and reach for the subtext. Now, wanted in surgery. By the year 2087, cybernetic geniuses had isolated what they call the <laughs> factor of multiple choice. They could design robots to do virtually anything a human could do more efficiently. Business and industry loved it. Cost efficient like crazy, and the HMOs, <laughs> it was like catnip for them. They phased out all but a few human physicians and substituted mechanical physicians. Phymex, they called them. Then the government made it a felony to perform any medical procedure outside an HMO-controlled hospital, a crime punishable by huge fines and imprisonment. There were only a few doctors left, human doctors, me, my friend Stuart Bergman, and the very last of the great neurologists, Kolbenschlag. Sixty years of hard work. And for what? To be relegated to clean up duty every morning, empty the bedpans. Machines are better. Hands are weak. Hands shake. Hands slip. Machines don't. Long live the physician mechanicals. Long live the Phymex. Long live the Phymex. Oh, why is it getting so dark? I can't see a damn thing in here. Nothing left. Spilled it all over the damn place. <laughs> oh, God. Attention, please. Attention, please. Cerebral procedure will commence in two minutes. Attending doctors, please take your seats in the observation dome. Hey, Stu, I'm over here. Hi, Murray. Oh, good morning, Dr. Calkins. Uh, good morning, Dr. Bergman. Good view from up here, huh? What's wrong? There's Colvin Schlag. He dropped dead two hours ago. Hey, I'm sorry, Stu. I'm real sorry. Look, I, I know he was... <laughs> look at this, Look at this news fact, man. He made page 118, five lousy lines. Says he was a pre-Phymex surgeon of some skill, that he died of acute alcoholism, and that's... that's it. It's not fair, Stu, but maybe he was luckier than the rest of us. At least he had a hell of a career. Like an old dog he died. All alone, like an old dog. God, I miss him already. Uh, I couldn't help overhearing, Dr. Bergman. I'm sorry. But there was nothing you could have done. His time was past. That's very kind of you, Director. Thank you. The Phymex will make a 1.2-inch incision at the base of the patient's skull. And today... Today it'd have to be a brain up. Yeah, of course. But one day it should be, I don't know, a mere goiter job or a plantar stripping, but no. Please, do. Today... Hey, it's got to be a brain job. Look at him down there in the theater with the with the Phymex 30 telescoping snaky arm slashing and drilling into the patient. Should have been should have been his patient. Dr. Bergman, please be quiet. Fur hole completed. Lateral section of the patient's skull has been removed. 
The Fimec will now begin repairs to the severed blood vessels. I spent 10 years of my life training to be a physician. You, you too, Murray. And now we're sitting here watching those, those, those metal things do the work better than we could in a hundred years. We're, we're, we're obsolete. Look, we, we should go. We don't need to stay and watch. Hovenschlag's dead. Bergman, I warned you. And they killed those, those things on there. They killed him. Those lumps of tin rummaging around in that man's brain. Come on, Stu, look, there's nothing. St hey, stop it. Stop it. Two attendants to observation dome. Stack. St Stuart, get down from there. Not even, not even a decent death. Remove him. Hey, hey, Leon, get, 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 get off me. Get off Take me. Take him let to let my me. office for observation. Hey, hey, what do you mean? I don't have any observation. Hey, hey, wait, ho, ho, ho. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm I'll okay. be right there. Dr. Thomas. Yes, Director? I'd ignore the outburst and I'd watch the company I kept. Arterial graft completed. The Fimec will now seal the burr hole. Ah, <sighs> impressive, isn't it? Yeah, a work of art. I'm glad you agree. Fimex, wonder of the new surgical millennium. Good day. You ever think how weird it is to have a bar in a hospital, Murray? Fimex don't need to get wasted, but it keeps us out of the way. Hey, Stuart, what happened? What did Calkin say to you in there? Scotch and soda, vodka and tonic. Please deposit seven and a half chips. I got it. Uh, what, did he, what, did he, what did he say? I, I don't, I don't remember. I mean, it must have been something, but well, I... You gotta take it easy, buddy. You keep, re you know, getting yourself all hot over this thing. They'll revoke your license, bar you from practicing. Yeah, well, we have a fine lot of practicing I do now, or you for that matter. Yeah, right. Look, pal, I don't much like it either, but the Fimex are infallible. They're safer, oh, yeah, they do a right, job yeah, quicker, yeah, more yeah, efficiently yeah, yeah, than sure, even a, yeah. a Colvin shot. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. right? Listen, old Fritz couldn't take it. That's... What killed him? Play an intern to a Fimec. Not his age, not the drink, and it was a broken broken heart. That's what killed him. You can't stop progress. You call this, all of this, progress? Okay, right. okay, look, it's a bad break for us, Stu, no doubt about it. But it's good for the whole rest of the human race, and they come before us. Bottom line. Bitter pill, but we gotta swallow but, it. The, the Fimex haven't been fully tested. There hasn't been a reported mistake at Memorial in the three years since their rollout. Yeah, yeah, a reported mistake, and that's that's just it. But what if... Oh, jeez, Stu, come on, let no, no, it no, go. No, 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 listen, listen, it doesn't, it doesn't smell right to me, Murray. I don't care about the damn logic of it. There's something wrong in the mix. You know, Calkins won't even listen to any suggestion that they're not heaven-sent. Machines brush our teeth, they make our coffee, they feed us, they operate on us, they take us to the toilet, they take us to work, they take us back home. And, and there has to be something. There has to be something that, that they can't do better than a human. I mean, there has to be. Are we getting a bit noisy over here, Dr. Bergman? <sighs> just, just airing a few views, Director Calkins. I thought we spoke about that. It might be construed as dissatisfaction with the way I'm running things at Memorial, and we wouldn't want anyone to think that... Would we, Doctor? Oh, absolutely unthinkable, Director. I'm just having an opinion is all. Yes. And what would that opinion be? Well, look, if we physicians had just a few more operations, a few more difficult operations, something serious to perform on our own, a few more than an occasional appendectomy, something we could take pride Don't in. Don't you think the Fimex are capable of handling any such thing, Dr. Bergman? You wouldn't trifle with perfection, would you? Just for ego? Hey, it's difficult to remember. I'm a doctor not doing any work for so long and That's all. about enough, Bergman. Can't you even consider... I said that's enough. That's all. Good evening. Attention. Attention. Operation room 3C. Patient injured in a pressure accident. Patient is male, age 32, height 6 foot 1 inches, weight 173 pounds, body core... Temperature, 96 degrees. Patient has suffered deep lacerations. Three major arteries severed. Significant blood loss. Both tibia shattered beyond repair. Assistant, Dr. Bergman, please administer anesthesia. Oh, God, it's horrible. His legs are mangled stumps. You, you, you'll have to amputate both. The FIMAC rates the patient's survival opportunity at 73%. Yeah, 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 I'm sorry, Assistant, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Dr. Bergman, 
please administer yeah. anesthesia right. now. Right, right. proceeding. Uh, count back from 100, please. 99, 98. A patient is under. Thank you, Dr. Bergman. Please stand behind the peripheral line. Three of the Fimex arms will begin fluid replacement. Eight of the Fimex arms will remove damaged skin tissue. Eleven of the Fimex arms will remove bone fragments. What, what is the time of the operation? Operation will be completed in 6.3 minutes. Eight of the Fimex arms will begin muscle tissue regeneration. <laughs> We have the technology. Uh, what, uh, wait, 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 what's, what's, patient what's that shows signs of consciousness. Uh, oh my God! What, what kind of resistance to the anesthetic has uh, he got? He's, he's coming out of it. Let me let, wait. Let me put him under. Doctor Bergman, please remain wait. behind wait. the peripheral line. No, 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 line. no! You, oh, I got to put him back. Oh God! My I, legs! I, my legs are gone. He can, he can see what you're doing. Like, like, oh, let me help. Let me patient help him. is conscious. Three of the Fimex arms what? will administer fluid BM214 no, 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 to reduce no. shock and hysteria no. symptoms. No, what are you? What's happened to me? No, 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 no! It's okay. It's okay. No, 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 it's going to be okay. No. Oh. Yes, why didn't you help him? Just a word would have done it. A soothing word. He's, he's dying. Wait. What you, stop it. Don't you see he's dying? You're, you're still working on him? Eight of the Vimex arms will begin to grab oh. the left artificial extremity he's, to the femoral arteries and veins. He's dead. He's, he's dead. Just a word. The left artificial extremity has been successfully attached. Don't try to stand. Eight of the five neck arms will begin Stop to grab the dead. right artificial extremity. He's dead. Arms. Nothing for me. I feel sick. Why don't you go home, pal? Get some sleep. Hey, a bartender? Scotch and soda? It's why this guy is dead, and the music's the same. It's a little different. Scotch and soda, please deposit four chips. It's the same. I think it's different. We killed that man. No, Stuart, no. I think you're tired. It's true. We did. The Fimec didn't know how to deal with miscalculation. There was, there was no way we could have known his heightened tolerance to the anesthesia. It was, it was by the book. But a glitch like that, he didn't have to be fatal. We could have calmed him for the few seconds it had taken for me to put him under again, but that goddamn machine doesn't understand the value of, of, of a bedside manner. That's it, Murray, that's it. That's what the Fimex don't have. They could never have. A bedside manner? Don't, don't you see, Murray? It would have made all the difference. Two seconds of human intervention. Well, maybe in this case, but the Fimex still save more lives than they hurt. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what we're told. But what if, what if... Hey, hey, come on. Put it away, pal. Even if there's something ugly going on there, there's nothing you can do. Well, we can't spend what's left of our lives scared of caulk and scared we're going to lose these miserable excuses for practicing medicine. Yeah, so... What'd you suggest? I got a plan. <laughs> Watch it, old chum. Am I gonna have to save your butt again? It's just a plan. It's just, it's just an idea. It's a means to an end. Paging, Dr. Bergman. Paging, Dr. Bergman. Please report to Operation Room 2D for scheduled appendectomy to begin in 3.8 minutes. Okay, like a Boy Scout. The courage and strength to change the things I can. Wisdom to know the difference. The courage and strength. Courage and strength. Okay. All right, now. Deep breath. This is it. Here's my chance. I'm here. Dr. Stuart Bergman present. Let us do it. Come on. Come on, where's my patient? My one op a week, and uh, you're late. Patient will be prepared for operation in 1.8 minutes. Oh, come on, wheel him in. Let's go. Patient will be prepared for operation in 1.7 minutes. Well then, computer honey, give me a number six scalpel. <laughs> scalpel. Check. Okay, Bergman, now fasten on this. It's one person. It's just one person for the greater good. Just an artery, not the person. You look at the arteries. I'm going to cut one. The Fimec will repair it. And another. And the Fimec will cut it. And then I'll cut another one. And then the Fimec will repair it. And then another. God help me. It's just arteries. It's just arteries. The Fimex are going to repair them. And then I'll cut another and another and another until it overloads. And then the guy dies. 
guy will die, but it's for the greater good. I'll blame the machine. No one's here to see. I'll blame the damn machine, and there'll be a trial. And patient is female, age 14, height 5 foot 2 inches, weight 103 pounds. Oh, God, it's not a guy. It's not a man. It's not a tired old man who wouldn't mind going to sleep after a weary life like old Fritz. It's a kid. She's just, she's just a damn kid. Dr. Bergman, please begin the scheduled operation. Do you need assistance, Dr. Bergman? Yeah, yeah, God help me, yeah. Eight of the Bimec arms will make a 2.3 inch long incision in the patient's lower abdomen. Three of the Bimec arms. Hey, uh, Stu, how about drinks? <laughs> Sometimes booze ain't the answer, Murray. No, 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 not tonight. Hey, come on, the rain's scheduled for another hour and ten minutes. Yeah, so I'll get wet. Report from Tracer SD-12. Dr. Stuart Bergman is under surveillance. He is alone. He walks out on Andover Street, approaching the 72nd slide walk. Passes entrance, turns west on Jeffrey Street. He stops, looks at Geodome. Female approaches from behind. Approximate age, 64. Identity, unregistered. Torn and soiled clothing, without shoes, probable slob town resident. You're a doctor, ain't you? You are. I see you come out of the hospital the last three days. Wait, wait, what, what is, what is, what is, what, what do you want, lady? You what gotta do you want help me? me. You gotta come to see Charlie. Who's, He's getting who's... worse, and his stomach is swelling. And, and wait a minute, wait a minute. Is this a trap that Calkins put you up to this? He's dying, doctor. He's dying. He just lays there twitching, and every time I touch him, he jumps and he starts throwing his arms and doubling over. And, and he keeps grinning, Doctor. Oh. He keeps grinning like he's dead and everything is it's, funny. It's, it's tetanus. you got to help me. Help Charlie, Doc. He's dying. We've been together for five it's, years. It's tetanus. It's tetanus, lady. I'm telling you, it's tetanus. What? What, what, what is that? It's, it, it's, it's a disease. Lock, lock jaw. It's, it's, it's very, very bad. Is it going to be okay? Wait, wait, why did you wait so long? Why, did, why didn't you take him to the hospital? Wait, I couldn't take him there, Doc. I just couldn't. Why not? No, Charlie wouldn't let me. He's scared. Oh. Charlie's scared of the metal yeah. things in there. Promise yeah. you won't take me in there, he said. So I had to promise him I'd come and find him a real doctor. You, you come, okay? Right now. No, no, no look, 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 lady. I, I can't help him. You've you got to take him to the hospital. The, the Fimex, they're good. They're free. They're, they're better than any human. But I promised him. He'd rather die than go to them. He will die. He will die. So you got to get him to the hospital. It, look, it's against the law for me to help him. You know that. We'd both be arrested. I, 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 I can't help him. Nobody's going to arrest me. I thought you were still a doctor to help the poor, but you ain't. <laughs> you creep. The hell with you. Hey, wait, wait, wait a minute. Hold up there, lady. Wait, come here, come here. Look, look, look. I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm very tired. I've been working long hours. The cops, you, you, you know, I'm... I'm, I'm I'm very sorry I spoke to you like that. I, I didn't mean Unregistered female walks six steps ahead. Turns south at 27 Jessup Street. Dr. Stuart Bergman follows. Female approaches Geodome. Enters Slob Town. Dr. Stuart Bergman follows. Female approaches Kickback Saloon. Dr. Stuart Bergman follows. How much farther is it? We're, we're going to be spotted for sure. Up ahead, through those doors. Charlie? Charlie, I brought someone. Charlie, you okay? No! Charlie, wake Jesus. up! Wake up! No, I brought gone. someone to help! He's gone. He's... Charlie, don't you die on he's... me! Charlie, we're, we're, please wake up. We're too late. We're, we're too late, ladies. He's gone. Charlie, he's gone. Wake up. Wait, 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 wake no, up. No, stop it. Stop it. He's dead. This won't do it. Come here. Come here. Come here. Let me. Hold, hold on. Hold on. Stop. 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 You, you're going to be all right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm okay now. Thanks. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I, we, I, but listen, I, I, I ought to leave. I, I, I ought to go. Oh, I, no, thank Dr. You. Stuart Bergman, 
Watch out! Please stand in place. Do not move. Get down! No, 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 don't pull a gun. It'll kill us. Don't move. Unregistered female, please place metal object on the floor. Put it down, please. Put it down. They're here for me. Die, you bastard! Right, chuck a chin! Die! No! Stop! No! Ah! Oh, God, she's gone. Please stand in place, Dr. Stuart Bergman. <sighs> Why don't you just shoot me too, Officer Tin Can? Unregistered female has been deleted. Dr. Stuart Bergman has been subdued and apprehended. Will transport captive to cell block STO1. No! Oh, oh, oh God! Oh God, my legs! My legs are gone! Prisoner Stuart Bergman, please uh, wake. Huh? Why? Prisoner yeah. Stuart Bergman, I'm please up, wake. Up, your trial will begin in 10.3 minutes. Yeah. You have the right to decide yeah. the composition of your jury. Do you choose an infallible mech jury or a fallible human oh, jury? Yeah. Yeah. Prisoner Stuart Bergman, please respond. <laughs> You're joking, right? Please respond or a <laughs> mech jury will be automatically uh, installed. Okay, uh, humans. I want humans. Humans! I want humans! The jury finds Dr. Stuart Bergman not guilty of crimes against the Hippocratic Laws of 2087. Furthermore, the jury recommends that Dr. Bergman be restored to full surgeon. The jury further finds that the head resident at Memorial, Dr. David Calkins, acted in collusion with the Zeebock Phimec Corporation to discredit human intervention and knowingly altered statistics and HMO records to disguise a higher rate of in-care fatalities. You've won, Stu. You've won. <sighs> yeah, I guess. Now human doctors and Phimex are going to work side by side. Yeah, that's just, well. Patients can even request what kind of a team they want. Yeah, people are going to rethink things, their relationship yeah, yeah, with things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Murray, I wasn't ever really even anti-robot. I just... I just think we ought to work at the level of technology that best gets the job done. And beyond that, all we're doing is making money for corporations in exchange for toots and whistles. People should come first, not just making everything automated because it's easier. Stu, would you have killed a man to get what you wanted? Wait, what, do you, what do you mean? What do you, what do you mean? What are you talking about? If it had been a man instead of a 14-year-old girl. Oh, uh, oh. Uh. Well, I, I, I might have. Maybe. Probably. I, I could have. I could have. Well, a means to an end. Would it be worth it? <sighs> Makes me sick even to think about it. No, no, Murray. It's, it's never, never, ever worth it. It's just a lousy human excuse for acting like, like a robot. 